Oh, hello in there. I am notorious for carrying tools and putting them down where I don't need them. So I'm constantly up and down, backwards and forwards. Because I'm an idiot. So yeah, the Mark II bike's running. I've been having those chain issues since the day I put the 56 tooth sprocket on. Uh, even with the 420 chain I ordered as an afterthought. Now, we hit 43Ks an hour, which is pretty average, especially for a 56 tooth. First thing I ever noticed about that was it robs me of speed, but I never really got that gain in torque that you'd expect. So uh, we are bogging at wide open throttle. Uh, so this is the engine that I plan to use for the Mark V build. And I want to know that it is running really, really well. Uh, so we're going to let it cool down for a bit and then just pull the spark plug out, have a look. Uh, it could easily have been fouled up. That fuel's been sitting in there for a, a month and a bit, a bit over a month, I guess. Uh, so old fuel may have fouled out the uh, spark plug. Uh, it also could be that carb might be a bit gummed up and icky uh, as well. So 43Ks an hour for the Mark II. I'm still pretty happy with that, but I'm still going to go ahead and uh, have a look at that spark plug. Right. A boy. Oh, hello in there. I am notorious for carrying tools and putting them down where I don't need them. So I'm constantly up and down, backwards and forwards. Because I'm an idiot. There's our spark plug. All right. There's our spark plug, which this is a NGK B5 HS. Now that is a hot plug to run. Uh, sometimes they do like to be run a little bit colder. Um, I do find the B5 HS uh, likes running hot, it likes running wide open throttle. I was using B7HS, which made for easier starting and uh, better sort of low range power, but the colder plug doesn't like wide open throttle. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, give that a polish, and stick it back in. Alrighty, so there's our freshly cleaned spark plug. It was looking in pretty good condition anyway. It was just a bit carbony. Um, one of the other things that could possibly have been the issue is the angle of that carb. There, you can sort of see there, I really have to cock the carby on an angle. Uh, so it's possible that it's drinking the fuel faster than I can feed it in. Uh, because that float bowl's not sitting level. But it's always been like that, and I've never really had that bogging issue before. I'm not pulling the top off, because if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Our exhaust hasn't been coming out. There's no air leaks, because um, it idles perfectly. What kind of a stupid idiot touches a hot spark plug and then drops it in the dirt? All right, so the air filter is just a bit of filter foam jammed between, uh, you know, two of the standard little uh, plastic inner, inner bits. 
sorry the light's not brilliant because it's late afternoon there we go um, so it's possible that there's a bit of dirty crap in there you can see in the top there's a gap so I'm going to hazard a guess and say dirty uh, carburetor is our culprit uh, so yeah look it's running at least uh, I'm going to kill the camera to pull this carb off because I tend to do my best work when I'm uh, not distracted by what's going on up here now, I did say that I was gonna pause the videos but I do need to point out that in order to get the carby off I need to take it off by the manifold and what I want to point out that in there is a cardboard gasket that I cut uh, incidentally cardboard gasket uh, on the intake side works perfectly and um, not so much uh, for the head and base gaskets I found uh, figured that out the hard way but uh, yeah I've, I've used cardboard gaskets on the intake more than once and uh, while it's looking a bit worse for wear I may have to cut a new one but that's held up really really well and it has not caused a single air leak all right so we've got our filter here which is squished but surprisingly not covered in crap and to confirm that look down there now I have not wiped that clean and that is immaculate in there um, I'm still going to pull this off and just make sure that uh, the jets are still clean because uh, sometimes they do vibrate loose uh, and that can be a cause of the bogging as well alrighty carby's back on it was remarkably clean in there um, so doing your filter like that works perfectly uh, I did actually loosen the screws down because I thought that maybe I may have had it compressed too hard up against there and uh, it might have actually been restricting airflow um, so cardboard gasket held up that's back on again uh, spark plugs clean and in uh, so we're gonna suit up for one last ride and see if we can't at least match uh, that top speed it's been a couple days since that last clip was filmed as you saw the bike was running rough as guts I had an order a new spark plug this one's a NGK B6HS so I had to wait a couple of days for my spark plug order to be ready now I actually dropped that spark plug three or four times because I didn't wait for it to cool down and I think I actually damaged uh, the core of the plug um, so we're going to go ahead and stick that new spark plug in and uh, hopefully that's all that's wrong with the bike 
otherwise the next option is that I may have damaged a, a ring in there um, and so it might be time to pull the jug off and have a look uh, but if it's not broken don't fix it so just remember kiss keep it simple stupid uh, there's no need to rip into this every time something goes wrong 90% of the time it is just a spark plug so let's get to it looking at the old plug compared to the new one now it's pretty easy to see why this one might have been causing problems all right let's see how we go So this thing started first fire as well it should we've got about yeah that much fuel on the tank uh, so i'm gonna maybe borrow some fuel from the other bike top it up uh, but i'm pretty happy that started so easily uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and get it out on the road and we'll try and match if not beat my previous uh run but we're going to go ahead and mount into the handlebars there for the speedo app and uh, fingers crossed it doesn't fall out <laughs> you fucking dog Juicy.
speed 42. Okay, so once I'd sorted out the uh, choke lever tightness, we were running well again. Now we lost a kilometre, and that could be down to simple things like atmospheric pressure, even the change of spark plug um, going from B5 to B6 HS. Um, but still, that's a fairly consistent speed. But uh, there is a little bit of variance, I will concede, in the GPS app due to things like, you know, on an overcast day like that, the speed can vary, even standing still, by up to three kilometres. Uh, but I was able to do multiple pulls and still hit that uh, same speed mark. Uh, so I'm going to call that 43 confirmed. And I'm really, really happy that all it was, was uh, definitely spark plug came into play, but it was definitely more to do with that um, uh, little choke flap coming loose. That will probably be the last time I run that engine before I pull it off uh, to put on this frame here. Uh, but this Mark V is going to be the, the cream of the crop. It's my... Uh, my favorite frame I, I like the look of it i like the size of it and i want this install to be as clean as perfect as possible uh, so i will be doing videos on that build and i plan to do it over maybe two or three videos i've got a really bad habit of making massive half hour long uh, videos so i'm going to try and condense it into bite-sized pieces i have a bad habit of blathering onto the camera like I'm doing right now and that takes up crap on for 10 minutes at a time as you all well know. I've decided to cut the crap and try and get that four stroke running. Uh, don't know how I'm going to manage that but that's probably my next big thing before carrying on with the Mark V build there because I really badly want to keep that four stroke going. The frame, uh, the frame's dodgy, but the motor's absolutely fantastic. It's got so much pull. Um, and I have a sneaking suspicion that it's that wheel that's junk. Uh, yeah, there's not much else to say, really.